And this was a, a protest that the NDC captioned as enough is enough. And it took place across all 16 regions of the country. And in all these 16 regions, we witnessed a presentation of the petition to the various electoral commission offices within those regions. Here in the Greater Accra region, started off at the Kwame Nkrumah circle, uh, where Johnson Isidun Kecha, the national chairman of the party, together with the mi minority leader, also uh, Kesela Tofosing, Dr. Kesela Tofosing, interacted with my colleague Eric Mawanebeta, who was on the ground with us, with the team. Take a look. There is no option. There is no sitting on the fence. If you sit on the fence today, and allow conflict to mature into war. You will be conscripted into the army to fight and die. Take this up further in parliament and demand that a joint parliamentary committee of some sort looks into the content on the register. The truth is that it is so obvious for anyone to notice that the register, the electoral register has been tampered with. The electoral commission has no option than to avail himself and the register for a possible forensic audit and a system audit. It is for all of us to understand that this must be done to preserve the peace of our country. And so we are demanding that as a matter of urgency, she should make the register available for forensic and a system audit. That must be done. It is not negotiable. We are demanding that and we insist it should be done before the elections. And, and for you in Parliament, the, the big question is, what course of action possibly could you take in Parliament as well in relation to this? We started a call from Parliament. After this demonstration, we will look at our options. And if we have to recall Parliament for this, we will do so. In re no, I can't give you details, but what I can tell you is that don't be surprised to expect a possible recall of parliament for us to consider the need for this register to be properly audited. Because we insist that from the level of um, tampering that we have seen. As Minority Leader Dr. Kesela Tofosi, recall of parliament is one of the options that the NDC is also considering beyond today. But at the end of the day, they presented a petition at the Electoral Commission headquarters here in Accra. Similar petitions were presented at all the regional levels where this uh, demonstration took place. But here in Accra, the party chair presented the petition, read it out, and was received by a deputy commissioner at the Electoral Commission in charge of operations, Samuel Tete. Take a look. If the findings of the forensic audit suggest, as we believe, that the register has been badly compromised, then we demand that there will be a re-exhibition of the register after the forensic audit so that we will be able to check everything that has gone wrong in the register and prepare ourselves for a credible election. We want the commission to review and correct all the unauthorized transfers which they themselves have admitted to. We want them to adopt a revised timetable for electoral activities. Why do we say so? We don't have a credible register as yet. And printing of ballot papers and other activities are based on a credible voter register. So we think that this forensic audit must take place. We must get a credible register acceptable to all stakeholders before the other activities such as printing of ballot papers commences. So gentlemen, I want you to know the commissioner who is receiving the petition on our behalf. Your name and designation. My name is Samuel Tete, the deputy chairman in charge of Oh, that's Samuel Tete there, uh, Deputy Commission in Charge of Operations at the Electoral Commission.
that was not the only place they presented a petition here. They went to Parliament as well and to present a petition to the Speaker of Parliament. That were, was also received by the majority leader uh, in Parliament, together with the minority leader who was actually to, with, with the protesters as well earlier today. Alexander Fenyamarkin had a few words. Take a look. I believe that this is one of the several ways of enriching our democracy. So I agree with the minority leader that as a house, we may have to look at the issues you presented. And I encourage all stakeholders to also avail themselves. Uh, I standing here is on record of having taken EC to the Supreme Court to stop a whole these assembly elections for some irregularities and illegalities. And I made my case at the Supreme Court. That's a matter of record. And I believe that if there are genuine concerns, we can all raise it and discuss them on the table by following lawful means. Oh, so that's Alexander Fenimark and the majority leader says if there are genuine concerns, he's of the belief that it must be looked into. Receiving the petition for and on behalf of the Speaker of Parliament, Right Honourable Aban Sumanakis for Bagbin, in Parliament earlier today. But what are the concerns and the issues, the demands of the NDC in this petition that they presented to these two crucial bodies in our democracy? First off, they permit an independent forensic audit of the voters' register and its IT system. That's the demand, number one. Two, convene stakeholders for collaboration. Also, agree to publish the findings of the forensic audit if eventually conducted. And the fourth demand, re-exhibit the register after the forensic audit. Want that to be done. And also, review and correct all unauthorized transfers. Adopt a revised timeline for electoral activities. Clearly acknowledging the fact that if all of these things are to be done with the forensic audit and so on, that definitely will affect the published calendar of activities for the Electoral Commission, we have 81 days. So you say probably 80 days, 80 days to December 7 elections. They know that there has to be a review and of, of the timelines for the electoral activities. Finally, institute accountability and integrity mergers going into the election. So these are the demands, essentially, that the NDC captured in that petition presented earlier today. This was a demonstration that captured majority of persons who were aligned with the NDC, but also the Progressive People's Party had some of their members on the streets. The young and the old were also on the street. Talk about the old. In the Western region, Paco Joe Peters, my colleague, interacted with a 96-year-old woman who had a reason to be on the streets today. Take a look. Oh, that's uh, Grandma Gladys there, 96 years old, uh, from Efiekuma there in Takrady. And that's my colleague. Paco Joe Peters interacting with her. Well, let's step a bit further on this matter. Sheikh Harimi Al Shaibo is a spokesperson of the National Chief Imam. He's joining us on Zoom. Sheikh, salam alaikum to you. Now, uh, thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. And I'm sure that the, the Chief Imam is watching closely how things are playing out between the Electoral Commission and the NDC. And up to this moment, th does he lose sleep o over how things are playing out now? Um. <clears throat> Indeed, as at um, um, about uh, and, uh, several days ago, when I, I went to just um, give him some briefing um, about uh, the impending 
demonstration by by the NDC and other other things having to do with the electoral environment and uh, the rising tension in the in the country and that uh, uh, religious leaders and other concerned are all raising their voices and uh, it will be necessary that he also you know offers his uh, elderly you know advice um, and I think that when I told him that um, he he felt worried. Um, after I had suggested to him that uh, tomorrow Wednesday was when we wanted to put the team before his advisory board. Indeed, he called me back and asked that it would be too late to deal with this thing on Wednesday, so we should quickly organize. That's how come we had to organize um, a sort of a peace, uh, what do you call it, a press conference uh, with some few media houses um, just this afternoon. So he, is he has received the information with anxiety, with fear, with trepidation, with concern uh, at age 105, he is still worried about the state of a country that he cherishes so much uh, and which is on the verge of being broken, broken um, apart uh, because um, we are going to have an election. And it, it's a worrying for him also that um, every electoral cycle with tensions in the country have to really um, reach this boiling point. Um, before we engage in, in elections. So it's, it's really a matter of um, worry worry for him. Indeed, the two forerunners, I mean, the two most important uh, flag bearers, all of them refer to him as, as their father. In fact, the former president, John Dramani Mahama, you know, refers to the chief imam. And indeed, he said it's not just referring, but that, that's the reality, that his father, his father handed him over to the national chief imam. So he's, he's his father. Uh, His Excellency Vice President Baumia also, also, you know, Chief Mam accepts him as as his son. Um, and from the day one he got into this this position, it, it, it has been demonstrated that he accepts Chief Mam as his father. And uh, that's why the Chief Mam feels that he has now the grounds to be able to talk to his own children. Uh, that he is concerned uh, about what is happening. And if they could use their influence to talk to their own um, grassroots supporters, to be careful, to be modest, and to be mindful of what we will do to throw this country into um, violence. I mean, having to learn the lesson from, from other other countries. So he's he, I, I, indeed, he's speaking to all the flag bearers, but he's speaking to his own children, uh, see, his, two, and, his two children. Uh, right. And, and you talk about the two children of the chief imam, then rightly said, but with this specific issue, it's not so much about the NDC and the NPP. It's a lot more about the NDC and the concerns they have about or with the Electoral Commission, is it not? Yes, I mean, it, it, it is true. But, you know, the issue about the election um, involves a number of stakeholders. So this issue cannot be discussed in isolation. Uh, so whatever decision is taken, it could have implications for NPP, it has implications for NDC, and indeed, it has implications for, for you know all the other you know uh, flag bearers of the other parties, and indeed the independent candidates are, are also there. And whatever happens to the voters' register, you know, <clears throat> has implications for the chances of all these uh, candidates. Um, and that's and that's why um, we, the chief mom, um, thinks that um, we should tread cautiously. We should tread cautiously, um, and find a way to unravel the stalemate in such a way that uh, we will find a resolution to uh, to the problem without breaking our country apart. And indeed, and, and you followed how things played out earlier today, that nationwide demonstration, enough is enough, as captioned by the NDC. The demands are quite clear in that petition, as I just ran through, Sheikh. The Electoral Commission's position about those demands as well are quite clear, widely publicized. What should be, in your view, the way forward after this, the posturing of the Electoral Commission as against the demands of the NDC? Well, um, uh, I mean, having to uh, uh, be a member of the, of, of the Peace Council, I cannot express a personal opinion because under the circumstance, um, I'm very mindful of uh, our collective decisions and what we can do. Indeed, I'm, I, can, I can say with, with confidence that ever since we heard that uh, uh, this demonstration was going to take place, we, we began some, as usual, from behind the scenes contacts um, to um, see what we can do um, 
to address, even if the demonstration comes on, to, to ensure that it is done more peacefully uh, without causing any damage to anybody. And then we also see then after the, the demonstration, what next? And I think that the door is still open um, for all concerned and all stakeholders to um, engage in the in the dialogue. You know, dialogue is a process. And I'm sure that at the first instance of meeting between NDC and the Electoral Commission, it was just a first stage of the dialogue. And I think the dialogue is a process. So maybe that first meeting might not have uh, led to a final resolution, but maybe another level of the discussion could lead us to a more, uh, more agreeable um, position where almost everybody feels comfortable with the the mode by which we sanitize the voters um, register. And so, so I, I I think that uh, let's we, we we plead that cool heads prevail. Cool heads prevail. We, uh, that's why all the parties have a council of elders. And then when we, when we say you are an elder, it means that you are somebody gifted with wisdom, you have a lot of experience. And I think that rather than allow the country to explode, uh, the elders of these two parties can come together uh, and use their elderly wisdom so that even as we pursue our concerns, we will still keep the country, country together so that even in the aftermath of election, you can have a, a country that is stable to rule. I, I don't think that it would be good for you to inherit uh, uh, the country by way of uh, uh, leadership uh, when the country is not cohesive, is divided against itself, um, you, will not, you will not find it very, very right. uh, comfortable. Right. So we are, like the chief member has pleaded, he's only pleading to particularly uh, right. um, the, the, the two contending part parties. But right. the chief member also has sent a caution to the, to the electoral commission but the credibility of the electoral commission is very, very important. Right. And to establish the co co uh, credibility, public trust is so key mm. uh, for that credibility. And so the electoral commission carries the heavy duty of, you know, guaranteeing trust. That's right. And uh, That's they, they must continue to be working on building trust between the EC as an election management body, and indeed not NDC alone, but the, all the other political parties. When they all trust that everything will be transparent, everything will be credible, I'm sure that it will be saved the, the tension that we are all uh, witnessing. So I add my vote to that of the National Chief Imam that the EC must sit up, uh, do, look at his work, its work very well, avoid um, uh, what we call avoidable mistakes, uh, and ensure that uh, going, going ahead, we are still building the trust uh, so that... Uh, Whatever assurance they they give, I mean the parties will will feel will feel assured. Sheikh, appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. And Sheikh Aramia Shaibu speaks for the national chief imam. Appreciate you. Thank you for joining us. Let's stay a bit further on this. In the Ashanti region, the demonstration was so peaceful until the time for presentation of the petition in the region. Aman Ibrahim Abubakar reported earlier that the police disapproval for all the demonstrators to enter the Electoral Commission premises turned chaotic. Here's exactly what happened. <laughs>
that's uh, the, the, the two angry supporters and, in fact, uh, these uh, protesters earlier today in the Ashanti region. Ibrahim Abubakar is joining us uh, on Zoom right now. Ibrahim, appreciate you. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana Tonight. We understand that as a result of what we just saw, three persons have been arrested by the Ghana Police Service there. Tell us what's the latest on this one. So, Alfred, as I speak to you now, all the three persons who were arrested um, have been released. In fact, the leadership of the NDC um, told the police at the um, EC office that until they release these three individuals, um, they are not leaving the premises. So the police had to give them that assurance that um, they just want to um, ask them some questions after which they will hand them over to the leadership of the party and ask them when they need them for more questioning, then they will have to come to them for these three individuals. So, um, like I said, all three who were arrested have been released. I see. And uh, I'm sure that after this altercation that we saw there, it's led to some conversation as to what happened in there. What's been going on in the region as a result of this? Well, um, I would say what would have been a beautiful um, demonstration rather than chaotic. So initially when they began, so they got to the EC office and people lauded everything because um, it was done peaceful and in an orderly manner. In fact, um, the demonstrators were following the route. There, there wasn't a time that they decided to even go against the directives of the police. So we all thought that um, now that they've got into the EC premises to present the petition, then um, that demonstration would have been tagged as one of the most peaceful in the region. But unfortunately, because others were going against the agreement of allowing only the leadership of the party to enter into the premises of the EC, this whole confrontation um, erupted. And in fact, some police officers and also some of the protesters um, were injured and were sent to the hospital. So like you said, it has raised some conversation. Uh, the leadership were not too happy because this wasn't what they planned for. They wanted um, to hear that uh, the following day, they've had a successful demonstration, but unfortunately, this chaotic scene happened. But in all, they said at the end of the day, um, looking at the massive turnout, they are satisfied with the um, whole turn of events. Much for this update uh, from the Ashanti region. So Ashanti region correspondent Ibrahim Abubakar there followed the protesters in the Ashanti region every step of the way. This is your election command center. On the back of this, the Ghana Police Service has issued a statement. We'll put parts of the statement on the screen right now, essentially commending the general public for uh, the orderliness, generally or largely, of this uh, nationwide demonstration ended peacefully in all locations with the, with the exception of an isolated incident at Kumasi in the Ashanti region, which we just showed to you. In Kumasi, contrary to the arrangements agreed between the police and the organizers, the demonstrators attempted to push their way into the premises of the electoral commission and then it says and pelted the police with with stones and uh, the police managed to bring the situation under control and calm was restored however one police officer was injured during the incident and he is receiving medical attention that's a statement issued by the ghana police service on the incident i just showed to you there's more of this on on three news.com make some time and visit three news.com but there was one notable development during this protest earlier today. When the protesters got to the Electoral Commission office to present the petition to the officials at the Electoral Commission, you know, it's not too far away from the National Cathedral site, where the National Cathedral was supposed to have been built by now. Well, we have, we have some dugouts or some what we've seen some work going on there which is supposed to be the foundation of the national cathedral because of those holes that have been created and the and the and the rains that we've had there was some water 
that had filled these holes dug at the National Cathedral site. And some of the protesters had a field day swimming at the National Cathedral site, probably for some, some, some blessings, you know. But take a look at this. Yeah, so the, these are the protesters just diving into what you're seeing is not a swimming pool. I just have to put it on record. This is not a swimming pool. These it's, are uh, the, the, these holes dug, the foundation that has been dug at the National Cathedral site. And as a result of the rains over the period, we've had water that has been collected in, in this place. And these protesters then decided, some of them decided to just dive in and, and swim their, their, their anger and their frustrations against the easier way. There you have it. How about that? For the cooling moment of an almost eight hour protest. And this video is by Ketsi Dadzi TV. Um, Capture these moments. That's on the on 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 the on the on the lighter side of it. Um, but there you have it. Uh, yeah, I think some of these things obviously do happen on the funny side of, you no, know, on the light side of what happened earlier today. And uh, talk about sports. Uh, Dennis Barbera, what is going to be joining me in a bit. He was telling me that probably these persons are training for the Olympics to to represent Ghana, but. We certainly appreciate the team from Media General who are on the ground today. Eric Mayonek, Beta, Judith Brown, we have also Ishmael, and then also the many other people who were there. Derek, who, who was in charge of the photos you see there. Um, Clifford on the ground as well. Beatrice Edu at the Electoral Commission. The entire team great job done earlier today so there you have it there's more of these and everything related to this demonstration on 3news.com make some time and visit 3news.com this is your election command center